Uno, dos, tres. Join us on a rigorous step-by-step journey to fluency. I'm Timothy, and this is LearnCraft Spanish. Today we're going to learn a few new adjectives. To begin with, let's learn some numbers. Now, you may already know these numbers. One is uno, two is dos, and three is tres. The thing about numbers is that they don't always work exactly the same way as other adjectives do. First of all, they have to go before a noun. It's not optional whether you put them before or after a noun, as in the case of bueno. Second, numbers don't tend to change based on the number or the gender of the noun that follows them. For example, two guys is dos chicos, and two girls is dos chicas. The exception is the number one. Uno does change based on the thing after it. And you've actually kind of learned this already. The indefinite articles un and una are actually just variations on the word for one. So if you put uno before a masculine noun, such as chico, it becomes un. So you would say un chico. Of course, this begs the question, how will we ever use the word uno rather than just un or una? Well, you'll use uno with an o at the end when you're just naming the number by itself or when it's separate from what it's representing. For example, one guy is un chico, but one of the guys is uno de los chicos. This is actually pretty easy to practice. By the way, now that we have some numbers, we can start to talk about the time. To say at two, you say a las dos, literally to the two. Incidentally, the reason that you use las is because hours are feminine in Spanish, as we'll explore soon. To say at three, you say a las tres, and at one is a la una. Let's do a little quizzing with numbers. There are two girls. Hay dos chicas. Hay dos chicas. One of the guys was here at three. Uno de los chicos estaba aquí a las tres. Uno de los chicos estaba aquí a las tres. I will have three, please. Tendré tres, por favor. Tendré tres, por favor. I have to be in one place. Tengo que estar en un lugar. Tengo que estar en un lugar. She left at one or at two. Se fue a la una o a las dos. Se fue a la una o a las dos. Let's talk a little bit more about the words uno and una because there are even more funny things they can do. For one thing, the word uno is often used as a pronoun to mean one, as in one person, vaguely defined. You'd usually do this when talking in the abstract. For example, one must wash one's hands before eating. This sounds super formal in English, but it's actually pretty common even in informal Spanish. As another example, can one do that without help? This would be, uno can hacer eso without help? Uno puede hacer eso sin ayuda? 
Another thing you can do with these words is you can actually make the words uno and una plural. So instead of saying una cosa, we can say unas cosas. What does this mean? Basically, this translates into English as some things or a few things. Spanish doesn't have a simple translation for some or a few. So what we're technically doing is we're using the indefinite article, a or an, and making it plural. We've already done this with the definite article, the. We can turn the thing, la cosa, into the things or las cosas. This is basically doing the same thing, but with items that are less specific. As another example, a place is un lugar. But if you change it to unos lugares, it means some places or a few places. Let's practice this a bit. There are a few men in his house. Hay unos hombres en su casa. Hay unos hombres en su casa. How nice that we have some things here. Qué bueno que tengamos unas cosas aquí. Qué bueno que tengamos unas cosas aquí. One has to do this like this. Uno tiene que hacer esto así. Uno tiene que hacer esto así. Why are there some guys here? ¿Por qué hay unos chicos aquí? ¿Por qué hay unos chicos aquí? Some girls and I had to do it. Unas chicas y yo lo teníamos que hacer. Unas chicas y yo lo teníamos que hacer. Now let's revisit the word dos, which most strictly means two, but it also has some funny things it can do. Here's a very common pairing of words. Los dos, or the two. For example, the two will be there. Los dos estarán ahí. Los dos is actually the most common way to say both in Spanish. And we can change it to las dos for feminine nouns. So, for example, both girls or both of the girls is simply las dos chicas, literally the two girls. For example, both girls were here. Las dos chicas estaban aquí. All right, let's move on to some other very common adjectives, and one of the most frequently used in Spanish is the word otro, which means other. Now, this word, just like numbers, has to go before a noun, not after it. So, for example, to say other guy, you would say otro chico. Or to say other girl, you would say otra chica. This word works a little bit differently from the English word other, simply because you don't put indefinite articles before it. What does that mean? Well, in English, we say another guy. It's like saying an other guy or un otro chico. In Spanish, you leave off the un and you just say otro chico for another guy or otra chica for another girl. Another way to think of this is that the word otro or otra simply means another as well as other. Another very common adjective is the word mucho. Now, we already learned this as an adverb. You can do something a lot or you can do something mucho. 
But you can also put mucho before a noun to say that there's a lot of it or many of them. And this adjective version, unlike the adverb, will change based on who it's describing. For example, many girls would be muchas chicas. Many guys would be muchos chicos. You would also use mucho in singular without the S at the end if you're talking about a quantity of something that we would consider a mass noun, such as time. For example, a lot of time or a long time is simply mucho tiempo. But many times or many instances or events would be muchas veces. Now, incidentally, the word veces is a bit weird, spelled V-E-C-E-S, even though the singular was spelled V-E-Z. Sometimes Z turns into C when a word is made plural. Now, let's also learn the adjective for better, which is mejor. Of course, once again, you've already learned this as an adverb, but it can also be used as an adjective right before or after a noun. For example, a better day might be un mejor día. Some better houses might be unas mejores casas. Now, something funny is that this word also means best. So, a better day would be un mejor día, but the best day would be El mejor día. This seems really strange to English speakers. We prioritize keeping better and best separate. But it's actually pretty easy to tell which one is happening from the context. Let's practice mejor, muchos, and otro with a mini quiz. I want her to have a better house. I want que ella tenga una mejor casa. Quiero que ella tenga una mejor casa. In the next one, use a formal voice. You won't have much time. Usted no tendrá mucho tiempo. Usted no tendrá mucho tiempo. You have done that many times. Has hecho eso muchas veces. Has hecho eso muchas veces. They have to be in another place. Tienen que estar en otro lugar. Tienen que estar en otro lugar. He is the best boy. Él es el mejor chico. Él es el mejor chico. I have had other things. He tenido otras cosas. He tenido otras cosas. There were many men there. Había muchos hombres ahí. Había muchos hombres ahí. They have done it another time. Lo han hecho otra vez. Lo han hecho otra vez. Note that this two-word combination, otra vez, is very frequent in Spanish, and it's one way to say again. So, for example, I have to do it again. Lo tengo que hacer otra vez. Now, all of the adjectives that we've been practicing tend to go before a noun rather than after it. However, there are some cases where we'll put 
mejor after a noun or pronoun, as in the case of algo mejor, literally something better. This is interesting because we do that in English as well in these cases, even though adjectives rarely go after nouns in English. So see if you can predict this next example. I have done something better for a long time. He hecho algo mejor por mucho tiempo. He hecho algo mejor por mucho tiempo. All right, we're going to get more practice with these adjectives at the end of the episode, but first let's revisit the idea of obligation that we were talking about in the previous episode. In general, using tener and que or Haber and que is considered a fairly gentle way of expressing an obligation. We'll get some more practice with this on today's quiz, but first, what if you don't want to be gentle and polite? What if you just want to boss someone around? In that case, you'll need imperatives. There's obviously a bit of a different tone between these two sentences. You have to go to that place versus Go to that place. Depending on the culture you're in, you might want to make sure you have a certain relationship with someone to use direct imperatives like that. Then again, sometimes imperatives can be polite, especially if you're giving directions for how to do something or if you say, por favor, along with the imperative. And of course, either way, Becoming fluent in a language does involve learning all the different ways the language is commonly used, and some imperatives do occur quite high on the frequency list. So let's learn some imperatives for both ir and tener. To start with, if you're talking with one person in an informal voice, the word for go as an imperative is ve, spelled V-E. For example, Go to the place right now. Ve al lugar ahora. That's an ir conjugation. And then the counterpart for tener is ten, spelled T-E-N. For example, have this. Ten esto. Now, it is possible to use imperatives even in a formal voice when you're using usted. But to do this, we don't actually have to learn any new forms. We'll simply use vaya and tenga, which are exactly the same as the subjunctive. For example, have this. Tenga esto. Go to the place, please. Vaya al lugar, por favor. When you're talking to a group of people, the imperative is going to be the panda subjunctive. Here are some examples. Go to the place right now. Vayan al lugar ahora. Have this. Tengan esto. Now, what if we want to tell someone not to go, but to leave? We'll have to make ir reflexive so that we're using irse. And in the case of imperatives, something weird happens. Compare these two sentences. Por favor, ve al lugar. Por favor, vete del lugar. In the second case, we're using the word vete, spelled V-E-T-E, which means leave as an informal imperative. This word is composed of the imperative, ve, plus the word te, which makes it reflexive. Now, this is super weird because we've learned that object pronouns such as te and lo and se are always supposed to go right before the verbs in a sentence. Why is te being stuck on the end of the verb like this? 
This is something that we call a contraction, and it's an exception to the rule that we've been following. We'll learn more about verb contractions very soon, but for now, note that imperatives have a tendency to do this. In fact, there's no way to order someone to leave using an imperative without putting the reflexive pronoun at the end of the word. So, for example, let's say you're using a formal voice. To tell usted to go somewhere, you'll use vaya. But to tell them to leave from somewhere, you'll use the word vayase, which is vaya with the reflexive se at the end. And then if you're talking to a group and ordering them to leave, you'll tell them vayanse. Perhaps the most common imperative in Spanish is the word vamos, which is how you say let's go. It's basically like ordering you and the group of people around you to go somewhere. Now, it looks and sounds exactly like the word for we go, but it tends to be clear from context whether you're saying we go versus let's go. And then to say let's leave, you stick nos at the end, literally let's go ourselves. This creates the word vamonos. It would be Vamos nos, but the S in the middle disappears. By the way, some people learning Spanish get this strange idea that vamonos means let's go, but that's not true. Let's go is vamos. Vamonos specifically means let's leave. Let's practice using ve, vete, vamos, and vamonos and other imperatives with a mini quiz. Let's go to the place. Vamos al lugar. Vamos al lugar. In the next one, you're talking to a group of people. Go to his house. Vayan a su casa. Vayan a su casa. Leave now. Vete ahora. Vete ahora. Let's leave the house. Vámonos de la casa. Vámonos de la casa. In the next one, you're talking to a group of people. Leave this place. Váyanse de este lugar. Váyanse de este lugar. Go now. Ve ahora. Ve ahora. In the next one, use a formal voice. Leave this place. Váyase de este lugar. Váyase de este lugar. Now, an important note about negative imperatives. What if instead of saying go, what you want to say is don't go? In those cases, we use no, and then instead of the imperatives you just learned, you simply use the subjunctive form. For example, don't go. No vayas. And then if you want to say don't leave, we don't use the contraction vete. Instead, we say no te vayas. No te vayas. So even though this is considered an imperative, this is a way that negative imperatives work differently from positive imperatives. You use the normal subjunctive, and you don't use contractions. Let's practice this with the negative versions of some of the sentences we just practiced. 
Don't leave. No te vayas. No te vayas. Let's not go to the place. No vayamos al lugar. No vayamos al lugar. In the next one, you're talking to a group. Don't go to his house. No vayan a su casa. No vayan a su casa. Let's not leave the house. No nos vayamos de la casa. No nos vayamos de la casa. In the next one, you're talking to a group. Don't leave this place. No se vayan de este lugar. No se vayan de este lugar. In the next one, use a formal voice. Don't leave this place. No se vaya de este lugar. No se vaya de este lugar. All right, if you're ready, let's get some more practice with these as well as with all our new adjectives using today's final quiz. One has to do what is right. Uno tiene que hacer lo que está bien. Uno tiene que hacer lo que está bien. In the next one, use a formal voice. Leave. Váyase. Váyase. Let's leave since he has to study. Vámonos ya que él tiene que study. Vámonos ya que él tiene que estudiar. Leave again. Vete otra vez. Vete otra vez. You didn't have to have one. No tenías que tener uno. No tenías que tener uno. Have the thing that I had. Ten la cosa que yo tuve. Ten la cosa que yo tuve. Let's go to another place at three. Vamos a otro lugar a las tres. Vamos a otro lugar a las tres. Let's go since there isn't a lot of time. Vamos ya que no hay mucho tiempo. Vamos ya que no hay mucho tiempo. I hope they have what they have to have. I hope que tengan lo que tienen que tener. Leave now or they will have to clean. Vete ahora o ellos tendrán que clean. Vete ahora o ellos tendrán que limpiar. In the next one, use a formal voice. You had to be there with her.
Usted tenía que estar ahí con ella. Usted tenía que estar ahí con ella. There will be a need to work that day. Habrá que work ese día. Habrá que trabajar ese día. There was a need to study for the test. Había que study para the test. Había que estudiar para el examen. Go to the place where there are three houses. Ve al lugar where hay tres casas. Ve al lugar donde hay tres casas. We'll have to have it at two. Lo tendremos que tener a las dos. Lo tendremos que tener a las dos. In the next one, you're talking to a group of people, and them is masculine. Go now. We have to help them. Vayan ahora. Los tenemos que help. Vayan ahora. Los tenemos que ayudar. They had to do something better. Tenían que hacer algo mejor. Tenían que hacer algo mejor. She didn't have time at one, so she hasn't done it. No tuvo tiempo a la una, así que no lo ha hecho. No tuvo tiempo a la una. Así que no lo ha hecho. There's a need to be there. Let's leave. Hay que estar ahí. Vámonos. Hay que estar ahí. Vámonos. You have to tell them, leave. Les tienes que tell, váyanse. Les tienes que decir, váyanse. She doesn't want me to have both. No, she wants que tenga los dos. No quiere que tenga los dos. I had to cook for everyone. Tenía que cook para todos. Tenía que cocinar para todos. In the next one, use a formal voice. Go there with your friends. Vaya ahí con sus amigos. Vaya ahí con sus amigos. I hope you don't have to work this weekend. I hope que no tengas que work this weekend. Espero que no tengas que trabajar este fin de semana. Go to the place now. Ve al lugar ahora. Ve al lugar ahora. I know we've covered a lot in this episode and you may need to drill down on something specific such as the word otra 
or using irse imperatives. To get more practice with anything in particular, go to lcspodcast.com slash 54 and work on whatever's giving you trouble. This show is brought to you by LearnCraftSpanish.com. The Spanish voice in this episode was our coach Michael Agudelo. Our music was provided by the Seattle Marimba Quartet, and I'm Timothy, encouraging you to do the hard work of learning Spanish. Acquiring a second language is one of the most fulfilling things you can do, so start your fluency journey today at lcspodcast.com.